Greetings, I'm Chris Nelly, and welcome back to Star Maid. The tweezer ship is progressing and looking quite nice. I have a bit more to do. I'm probably going to make those green things go along the length of this, or most of this. I'm really struggling with what I'm going to do. I know I am probably going to take it back to that joint in the back. But I am enjoying the look of this ship. And then when I get done with the actual look, then I can start messing with the logic and make salvage beams that can pan up and down, which will take a little bit of doing. But a little bit more cosmetic than we can actually get to doing cool stuff. Uh, go. Hmm, bit of finagling with logic now, because I don't think I can add any more decorative elements until I actually get this part correct. So, let me explain what I got here. These two are going to overlap in the middle. They're going to overlap into each other to where they line up and the salvage beams will be along this line. So, they have to flop in and out, in and out. So I had to do some things that I had never done before. First of all, I had to do the standard door switches with each one to where I had rotator blocks. You hit this group and they flip out. You hit this group and they flip in again. And then I had to set it up, well, once this silly little spike ends for a moment. Then I had to set it up to one flip-flop. I had one door switch that controlled all of them to where this switch alternates. And then I took that and I hooked it up to a clock, which if you don't know, Bench and a few other higher, much more experienced star made players than myself will tell you you need an activation module, you need an or, you need an and, and then you put it into a delay, and then you put in an activation module, and then you take it back here and put it here to where when I do this, right now it's still, but with a wireless module that's easily toggled from the main ship, it now goes in and out. That's what I need to do in order to get them there. Now my next step is to get them. I need to, first of all, make those into interlocking salvage beams arrays, and then figure out a way to trigger them, and then figure out a way to trigger them wirelessly. I'm thinking I'm probably going to have a bunch of control blocks that dock in the main part of the ship. Which is kind of cheating, but it isn't a bad way to do this, I don't think. So, let's do that. Okay, bit of a problem here. Um, well, learn a bit about logic, about how to have clocks and such. Like up here, I can have, I can have clocks in either one of these things. Like I already have this, and I figured out how to get these to interlock a little bit of planning and such, and then I tested it before I could go too far. Let's say, let me go back and go ahead and show you the main problem. Okay, so I should be able to set a clock for it to be continuously firing, and I can, but the problem comes when you're moving. Aha! Always when I'm trying to show something that decides to do that. But you see the problem here. What's the point in having this on a swinging arm if it's only going to go where it initially is being fired from? It's completely pointless. So, instead of that, we are going to get rid of this. Man, that's trippy. We are going to go ahead and get rid of this swinging arm thing. It did look awkward anyway, and we're going to just line the inside of this with salvage things. Make this simpler, and then make it to where it just opens and then fires. That's all I really need to do. It will make it easier to set up with logic and with wireless, but 
I am bummed that I can't have my swinging up and down thing as planned. Oh well. Ah, uh, uh, that was a pretty much a week long bender trying to get this to work correctly. But it's done. The tweezer miner is now done. I I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna name it. I might have to name it after the prediction, but I might come up with a more pronounceable name. But I have the interior done of the tweezer miner. And, more importantly, I have the mechanism working correctly. Save. Undock. Ah, oh, I have to... There we go. Time to fu get within a good position to show this off to you. And one of my better cam camera angles. What? What? Come on! Okay, not that big a deal. I'll have to save the ship file again, but as you can see, I have with the press of a button, I can unfurl and have the rays face a 45 degree angle. So with the button press, I can do it again. What use may that have? Well, let me show you. First of all, Let's get both of these started up. If I can. Say it's going to be a pain. So let's go ahead and do it the ye old fashioned way. Because those buttons work, but they don't work great. You have to time them perfectly. And they have to be in just the right position. Ugh. Oh. Now I know what's going wrong. Say, so, let's get this sucker running. That gets that one going. And go ahead and do it with this one. Get this clock running. They're probably out of sync. Yeah, they're way out of sync. Okay, so I got these figured out for pretty much demonstration purposes, but it's still not great. And this ship tends to lag things a bit, because I have, I don't even know how many salvage things, but each one's about five blocks long, and they interlap block with each other. There is no space in between. As you can see, the beam from the next one goes in between. And yeah, that makes a tight little cone. But... This does something kind of neat when you unfurl it. It makes a perfect latticed square right in here, which is perfect for a scanning kind of idea. So let's go ahead and find a nice asteroid to test this with. Here's a good asteroid right here to test this on. It's far too small to fit in the fine comb, but the fine comb is mainly so I can dock and fit at things and have it be less unwieldy. I wanted to have more mining capacity in a smaller frame. That's the main idea I had for this. So, seems like it can't fit, but when you do this, it is now pretty well. It's at the far end of the corner of this. And it does a pretty good job of scan mining. See, it's already down by quite a bit. You see, the glass actually allows you to see it without the beams to where you can see how effective it is. It's not hyper fast. And that brings me to the one failure I go of this craft is that it's not really big enough or powerful enough. I want to eventually, but not right now, scale this up to probably about three or four times its size. Have something with more like 15 or 20 blocks per beam and have it be taller in the arms. That way when you unfurl it, it makes a cube. 
fact, I could probably modify this. I could change the way the arms work and make clamper arms on the front that are thicker. And it would be... It wouldn't be as wide, but it would make a cube, a perfect cube around an asteroid. I need to figure out the average asteroid size, and that's difficult information to find. If you guys happen to know what the average size of a star-made asteroid is, could you please let me know in the comments below if you have that information? Because it's not posted anywhere, and it's kind of important for this kind of craft to know that. Because I'd, I'd make a cube that was exactly the maximum size and no more and no less. You could even pair this with a push beam if you wanted to. You could put a push beam apparatus on a delay, like a lot of automatic miners do, and then it would be a scanning miner. But I don't see much point to that. And the other problem, and I've heard this complaint quite a bit, is that you can hook up wireless logic now. You can hook up chests to the salvage beams, but you can't hook up chests to other chests on other things. There's no way to transfer cargo from one ship to the other. You have to manually take it. Which isn't that big a deal. I mean, I can just take it out of the arms when it's done. But it would be really helpful here to where I wouldn't even need the chests on the arms, except maybe for transfer purposes. But just a thought. I'm proud of this. It's one of my better logic ideas for Star Maid. But my opinion isn't the one that matters. Lord Inglop commissioned me to make this. I better ask him what he thinks of his new craft. Heretics. Of course, my lord. I've been sitting here doing petty things, and you're right. There are threats in the stars. Threats behind every shadow. Non-believers to purge. So that's what we'll do next time. The crusade begins. If you liked what you saw, if you like the construction of this new miner and the beginning of the great alien hunt, Hit the like button. And as always, click the knot on your way out.